So with that out of the way, uh, the rest of this uh, uh, 50 minutes or so remaining is going to be part that's uh, fun for me, uh, which is just playing with the chat GPT. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. Um, for you know, problem sets one through six so far this semester, and I do think this is something that can be really helpful for people in the long term because um, you know I get why people don't watch uh, lecture videos and even homework helper videos, and sometimes you know it does baffle me when people refuse to watch my lecture videos but they want to watch Khan Academy videos because uh, not to say I'm better than Khan Academy, but one. One I one um, aspect to which I am better is my videos are tailor made for this class. A lot of the Khan Academy or Organic Chemistry Tutor videos, they are not. I mean, they might be covering the same topic, and maybe they might be explaining things better than I am, <laughs> but uh, they definitely are not made for this class. So it baffles me when students watch those other videos while refusing to watch mine. But Hey, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but one thing that videos can never provide is a level of interactivity. And I do believe uh, generative AI can be better in that way. Even when it's occasionally wrong, especially with the problem sets where you get immediate feedback on whether the answer was right or not. Uh, you know, ChatGPT is at this point good enough to correct itself in many of the cases. So, so that's really the reason I'm doing this demo. Um, so let me continue doing it. And it's kind of fun for me because uh, as I do this demo, I'm kind of imagining what kind of mistakes that uh, you students can make and um, and having ChatGPT kind of work through that. And all of that is fun for me. <laughs> so, um, so if there aren't any other questions from people who are here in real time, I'll do that. If you do have questions that's uh, related to the course content, whether that's related to this ChatGPT exercise or not, please let me know either in the chat or by unmuting yourself and asking out loud, and I'm happy to cover that. Um, so, you know, virtual class session, I started doing this when uh, basically I wasn't getting any questions. I wasn't seeing lots of people in real time and I wanted to make sure that my time's not wasted. That's why I'm just uh, generating content for me to cover on my own. But uh, that doesn't mean that's what I have to do. I'm happy to uh, respond to the needs of the people who are here in real time. So so with that, uh, let me get started. Um, so I'm just gonna, we have ton of time today, 45 minutes. It's probably enough to do like three or four qu substantive questions. So, um, and you know, I'm not gonna go through the whole exercise of um, uh, getting ChatGPT to solve an entire question for me and then giving it the prompt. I've done that enough times. So let me just start with um, the, what is my genuine attempt at uh, approaching this course material in an academically honest way. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure the ChatGPT is uh, properly prompted to, um, to not give me answers right away and actually help me learn. Hi, I'm back. Um, I'm working through my mechanics homework problems again, and I'm really trying to learn the material, both to, to prepare for the timed assessment next week. Where I'm told, oops, I'm told I can use Chat GPT or any other outside help for that matter, and the oral exam to follow after that. You know, some of you might have completed this already. What I'm calling oral exam to Chat GPT is the required one-on-one -on -one meeting. I call it oral exam because Chat GPT doesn't have access to our course material, so doesn't know what's meant by required one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, but if you have already done that, you don't have to do it again. Like that's the structure of the class. Oral exam to follow after that. Uh, so uh, please. Uh, uh, when I post the question here, uh, and I'll tell you what I've done so far, um, don't give me all the answers right away, but just help me with the next step so that uh, I can learn to do these problems myself. So uh, you've been really helpful so far. So please uh, continue to help me in this way. 
thing too. Uh, I've been told that if you flatter ChatGPT, it uh, behaves better. So that's why I've included that last two sentences. Otherwise, my inclination is to be mean to something that's not even a you know sentient. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm told that if you flatter it, it uh, works better. So <laughs> I'll, I'll thank my toaster if that makes the toaster work better. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is probably actually a good question to work on. So I'll do that. Um, so small uh, answer questions below. If a block starts uh, from rest at A, what is the speed at B? Um, would it be? Yeah, so I think I can. Um, so I, you know, here I'm just trying to make mistakes that are maybe even halfway um, plausible. I'm looking for my pen. Here it is. Um, so one mistake that's uh, maybe not halfway, but quarter, quarter of the way plausible is this kind of mistake. Uh, mistake being that I can imagine someone uh, maybe misreading the question and not realizing that you are supposed to calculate to B, but instead you calculate um, this entire height from A to the bottom, you know, 4R. So you use something like conservation of energy. Or um, worse yet, you look up this formula, which says um, V is equal to square root of two times the potential energy, so mgh, so that would be 4r, divided by um, the mass. I did the most of the algebra in my head. Um, so you calculate uh, square root of, oh, no numbers. OK, 8rg, and you plug that in. Um, by the way, um, yeah, for problems and assessments in attached work, if you start out with an expression like this, at some point I don't give you full credit because I want you to justify your formula. So here I'm kind of modeling what someone might do poorly. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot to. Uh, so I need to put in this answer and it'll be wrong. And I'll ask, uh, so I'm, you know, role playing what um, what you could do if, uh, you know, so you're working through homework and you, the, the homework system says that your answer is wrong and you don't know why. Uh, and you thought about it and you are still stuck. And this is the area where I think a ChatGPT can actually be more helpful than my homework helper videos. Because with the homework helper videos, uh, it doesn't immediately tell you why your answer is wrong. <laughs> it tells you what my correct answer is. Um, but ChatGPT has the potential to tell you what you did wrong. So let me copy and paste this in. Um, uh, I thought I did uh, this uh, question right. I found the right formula in the textbook, which, by the way, I don't want you to. I want, want you to learn how to drive it. Uh, but the uh, system says uh, it's wrong. Oh, did I make a mistake? Contribution. Yeah, so now, now these explanations are good for you to read through. And in fact, um, in so, I mean, you know, getting this part requires you that you actually notice the, the speed at B part. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that would have made a difference, but the setting up equation like this is how you should start saying total energy at one snapshot equals total energy at the other snapshot. This is a great step to go through. Uh, so for VB, so it doesn't match, like setting up the, uh, in, in setting up, yeah, so if you miss that you had to get to B, then you might have set up this equation without the second term, or missing the change in potential from 4R to R, which, yeah, good, yeah, this is <laughs> great, and again, this is where I'm saying, you know, um, with the uh, generative AI, you could uh, get this uh, explanation of that mistake like in a few minutes. And I do want to make sure you read through it and you understand it. 
you know, don't just to skip to the answer and uh, just copy. Okay, six instead of eight. Don't do that. The main way in which that help that hurts you is uh, you're not going to remember what these correct steps were if you didn't read it through it and spend some time over your own to understand it. And when we do our required one on one meeting for those of you who haven't done it yet, that the fact uh, um, you did a uh, you cut corners that prevent you from remembering or understanding things. It all come up. It, it it just naturally comes up. That's why I started doing the required one on one meeting. So okay, uh, next one. What is the uh, so? Thank you. Uh, I'll work on the next part and ask you questions. Stop. Um. So. Uh, what is the force of the track on the block at B? Um, so, instead of me imagining uh, mistakes, uh, let's say, um, so I'll paste this in and I'll tell it that uh, uh, that I know the, the centripetal, uh, f centripetal force formula, but that I'm not sure what to do. Uh, is that uh, well? I don't know if it's realistic or not, but I will just say. All right. Uh, so this is the next part, and I think I'm supposed to use the this formula f c is equal to m b squared over r. Um, again, this is the kind of phrasing that I wish you wouldn't use. <laughs> <laughs> you know, identify this as a centripetal force so that you understand what it's about, not just formula. Um, uh, but I'm not sure how this uh, relates to the force and from the track. Um, so hopefully ChatGPT will explain the formula is a centripetal force and the force from the track is normal force provides the centripetal force. Uh, track formula gives the centripetal force, right? <laughs> um, it's a separate force itself. Oh, ah, that's great. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think I went over this with most of you uh, during one of the lab sessions, and it's something for you to remember when you're drawing free body diagram. Um, by the way, that's a, drawing free body diagram is the one thing that ChatGPT still can't do. Uh, it can give you the description of free body diagram, and you might draw it. And I think it can even check if it looks right, but it just can't draw it. it that particular functionality isn't there yet. Um, at point B, two forces gravity downward, normal force in. Yeah, that's the correct description of free body diagram if you're drawing it yourself. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's wrong. So, so we checked upward. Um, it should be we checked to the right. Uh, uh, so so if you are following this, um, it'll be wrong. Um, but let me try that and see if uh, ChatGPT can correct itself. So you know here I'm noticing that um, it made a mistake, but. <laughs> uh, maybe um, so you know as you're trying to learn with the help of ChatGPT, maybe you didn't notice that this description sounded off so you drew a free body diagram that looks like gravity downward and upward and you followed what it said so you wrote that n is equal to mv squared over r plus mg solve for v wait solve for v no it is uh I'm sorry uh, i'm really looking for it so plug in expression for v at b uh, which i think that's right so n is equal to and that thing squared gets rid of the square root oops rg divided by r plus mg simplifies quite a bit so you get 7mg, and this will answer will be wrong. So I'm going to enter 7mg, let the system tell me it's wrong, uh, and then ask ChatGPT for a follow-up. Why is that wrong? Uh, okay, I follow the algebra 
And I think uh, I did it right, but the system tells me the answer is wrong. Uh, um, did I make a mistake? You know, or did you make a mistake? <laughs> but let me just uh, leave it here. We do calculation step by step. Uh, I mean, that is right. Um, yeah, uh, so let me ask. So you might look at it and say, um, it be um, realize the normal force pointing up doesn't make sense, maybe. Uh, uh, so I'm looking at where the block is at point B. And uh, I'm not sure if a normal force N should be upward. Are you sure that's right? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, it's not at the top of the loop. So I guess like uh, looking at this, uh, you might realize, oh yeah, it's wrong. Um, and... <laughs> By the way, don't follow this. Once you recognize that, then realize the rest of the stuff will be wrong again. Um, uh, oh, oh um, but the block is not at the top of the loop at B. B is on the left edge of the circular loop. Uh, can it be on the side of the loop? Correct free body diagram would be yeah, M downward, MG downward, and inward. Yeah, good, good. Oh, it's never gonna get it. Uh, yeah, so it's never gonna get the fact that uh, will it never get it? Um, uh, sorry, uh, I'm look. Looking at your Newton's second law equation, but since the normal force and gravity are perpendicular, uh, are are they even supposed to be in the same equation? Yeah, by the way, ChatGPT will almost always agree with you. So don't uh, try not to gaslight it. Um, that makes it work worse. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just had to figure out that part to yourself. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't think without that nudge, ChatGPT will have gotten it. It's a large language model, not large geometry model. So um, <laughs> that that's one of the reasons to use ChatGPT in an honest way, where you are a partner in learning, not uh, you know, not um, not just uh, cheating your way through with it. Because uh, you know, ChatGPT does have shortcomings. There are certain things that you, as a human being, can actually reason through that the non-sentient uh, generative AI won't actually be able to reason through. So. And all these insults against the ChatGPT, I'm not typing it because I want it to work well. I don't <laughs> want it to <laughs> work poorly. Uh, uh, I got it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's look at part C. Um, do I want to do part C? You're not actually in the previous attempts at um, kind of doing this. We got part uh, uh, C answers already. Uh, this is 5mg. I have a good memory. That's how I remember this. Um, so we already did this. We don't have to do it again. Uh, wait, did I misremember it? At the top? Oh, um, yeah, sorry. This is what happens when you do it too quickly. So uh, instead of the height difference being 3r, it'll be 2r at the top. So um, it'll be Um, so the VB will be square root of uh, 4RG. So this should be 3MG, I think. Maybe. <laughs> and at the bottom, this will be 8RG. So this should be 9MG, I think. If it says it's wrong again, then okay, good. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, good. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, there's a part to see, but that looks similar to what we already did. So I may not have them either. Um, Yeah. Let's see if we will explain what I the steps I did for part C. Or maybe not. I don't know. Because it already says that I got the correct answer, so it might not bother explaining again. Yeah. 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 Alright, good. Um and you know, if uh, um you don't follow what I did in my head, then you can ask your chat GPT for step by step explanation of what you do in part C. So uh, all right, I think we still have enough time for maybe two more substantial questions. So let's go find them and do them. Um, this doesn't feel substantial. Uh, this is just definition of impulse and force relating to impulse. Same thing here, although this is such a common question that it might be worth doing. I might come back to question three. We'll see. Yeah, again, definition of, um, you got all the numbers that you need to calculate momentum. So, you know, any kind of question where you can do it by finding the right formula are typically the easy questions. That's really the reason I'm not doing it. Uh, you know, elastic collision, identical. Yeah, so part B of this is hard. Um, so yeah, let's ask it. So part A, you can do it really easily. You can even just guess. Their speed just to swap. Speed of the leading bumper car after the collision is 7. Speed of the trailing one, 5.3. The speed is just to swap. <laughs> uh, part B is where you actually have to set up the equation and actually do it. Because their mass being now different. Uh, actually makes it so that the nice cancellations that would have happened in the nice formula, um, they, they don't happen uh, in part B. So I'll do it. Uh, so so I'll t tell ChatGPT, um, I think uh, I guess the, the answers to part A correctly. A just made the sense, uh, but uh, Guessing the, uh, let me actually uh, guess it uh, again. Uh, but guessing the same answers to part B isn't working. Can you help me? Please. <laughs> oh, maybe I should have said please there, it didn't hear. Um, Problem changes because not, yeah, greater that makes a class elastic between two objects of different masses. That makes the algebra super challenging. <laughs> um, yeah. Conserve momentum and conservation cannot engage. Great. Yeah. Holds for elastic collisions. Yep. Yep. Uh, conservation momentum. Yep. And the signs are the same because they're both moving in the same direction. Um, which uh, you might have to take into account if uh, they are moving in different directions. Uh, yeah, and I guess plugging the expressions for mass will simplify your algebra quite a bit. You can just cancel out the masses uh, or cancel out m's and retain the 1.25s. Conservation kinetic energies, yeah, that looks right. Uh, you can solve this. Uh, so let's see. You know, I can imagine this. When you are trying to solve this by hand, um, there are ways where you can get stuck um, in a place where, oh, I don't know what to do next. Let me see if I can get stuck. And then once I get stuck, I'll ask ChatGPT for, how do I get unstuck? It's going to be challenging because uh, I'm used to um, coming up with the methods to solve this as quickly as possible. But now I'm trying to do it in a way where um, I get stuck <laughs> in a difficult part. <laughs> so let's see if I can do it. it. This is actually harder than solving it. I'm used to doing it correctly and as quickly as possible. But, you know, this can be a demonstration of some ways in which you are working through an algebra and you are not making any mistakes as such. 
But um, nonetheless, the set of steps you can go through might actually lead you down the steps where um, where you, you can um, solve for the thing you, that you are trying to solve for. And um, for those of you who are trying not to be frustrated at doing these questions, I recommend the ChatGPT because uh, uh, it's uh, uh, solving this kind of equations, algebraic, uh, non-transcendental equations. It's something that SageMath is really good at. So um, I, you have some demonstrations of me doing this with SageMath. That's really what I recommend because you know working through algebra like this, even when you are doing it correctly. You know, going through the set of steps that are not frustrating can take a good amount of time, good amount of mental energy. So, um, all right, I'm just going to cancel out messes from the beginning. So I write down as little as possible. And, um, oh, actually, in this question, there is no easy way to do it. Usually, the easy way to do it would have been to solve for the thing that was uh, stationary initially. So like uh, solve for V2 final, but it wasn't actually stationary initially. So I don't think it actually simplifies at all. Um, but let me solve for V1 final first anyway, because uh, that's kind of the opposite of what I would do if I were looking for um, quickest possible solution. V1 final is equal to uh, V1, oops, initial plus 1.25 V2 initial minus V2 final. Wait, is that right? No, I don't think that's the one that leads to the most complicated expression. Yeah, that looks way too simple. Let me solve for V2 final. I think that's the one that um, makes algebra steps more complicated. So let me do V2 final is equal to, I move this over. So I have a, a, a V1 initial minus V1 final, and I divide by 1.25. So I have this um, plus V2 initial. Maybe that's not all that much more complicated. So I have that. Uh, let me rewrite on uh, this equation. So let me solve it for V2 final squared. So V2 final squared is. Oh, and actually one thing that I can do to cut down the algebra is imagine multiplying through by 2 to get rid of the factor of 1 half that I could do. Then what I'm doing is I'm moving V1 final squared over. So it's a V1 initial squared minus V1 final squared divided by 1.25. And I uh, and I still have this. 1.25 having canceled. I wonder... Um, yeah, let me not make a deliberate mistake right now. I'm just writing down V2 initial squared. So what I'm hoping is when I plug this in, no, V2 initial squared will still cancel out from both sides. So that actually simplifies. So, um, so uh, rather than plugging it in, let me just do, um, yeah. Yeah, so let me just do it this way. Uh, I'll just paste this in, say that looks complicated, and ask, what do I do next? Because uh, I'm not having good luck uh, coming up with an intentionally complicated expression unless I deliberately make a mistake. So, all right, uh, I got this so far, but it looks uh, super... What do I? It'll probably tell me to, you know, do with the go with the natural next step. Plug this in here, and there will be some simplifications that'll happen. Correct. 
correctly a <laughs> cucumber. So <laughs> there's a simpler way. What? Oh, it's a. Uh, oh, all right. Um, I don't know if that's that works, but. Is that right? That feels wrong to me. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure that's incorrect because of the difference in masses. Unless, I don't know, this is something new. I have never heard of this before. Uh, but let me not try to waste the time disproving it. And if it's really correctly telling me that this is right, um, these two equations simultaneously to find it. So I substituting in from uh, relative into the momentum. I mean, you know, I can give that a try. Let's see what it does. Um, <laughs> it's possible that I'm learning something new today. So uh, this is the momentum equation. And um, so I can, so I guess uh, from there, yeah, I plug it in those numbers. So let me solve this for um, V2 final and plug it in. That'll give me a way to solve for V1 initial. So, uh, so V2 final, according to that equation is, 300 times 7 plus 1.25 times 300 times 5.3 minus 300 times V1 final divided by 1.25 times 300. Okay, so plugging that into that equation, and I'm going to plug in the numbers as I do that. So this goes on to the left-hand side, 300 times 7 plus 1.25 times 300 times 5.3. It gave me too many 300s. They cancel out. Um, 7 plus 1.25 times 5.3. Minus V1 final divided by 1.25 is equal to, uh, let's see, V1 initial was 7. Um, minus V1 final, that's an unknown, divided by 1.25 plus uh, V2 initial was 5.3. So solve this for V1 final. Um, let me make this a little smaller so I have more room. I'm going to do some of the algebra in my head. Um, so collecting the like terms, I'm going to collect. Um, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, this is where um, um, you, this is going to cancel out that, <laughs> so it's not going to solve for anything. Uh, so he said, try substituting the expression relative velocity equation to the momentum equation. So, yeah, I didn't make a mistakes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I think... Uh, so I'm pretty sure what it's calling relative uh, velocity equation, if it's valid at all, it's uh, equivalent to the momentum conservation equation. So using that, um, it doesn't save you from having to use conservation of energy equation. So let me do this. I'm going to paste this in. Uh, I got this so far, but I think uh, in the next uh, step, uh, if we... If we want to forget to cancel out, right? Really? Are you sure? 
Okay, it's still doing relative velocity. Equation. Way to find all into there. Did I make a mistake? Um, so is that? I think that is still the relative velocity equation. Uh, plugging into here. Yeah, this time I don't think they'll cancel out because this 1.25 between the. Uh, simplifying this equation will allow you to solve for all right so I think I can actually do this in my in, in the calculator directly because um, so 300 cancels out that part makes things super simple so what I'm doing is on the right hand side I'll have 1 plus 1.25 uh, v1 final so 2.25 v1 final that's what I'm gonna divide with at the very end so for the left hand side, I'm calculating 7 plus 1.25 times 5.3. I'm skipping all the 300s that will cancel out. And I need to move over 1.25 plus 1.7 to the left. So uh, minus 1.25 times 1.7. That's the entire left hand side divided by 2.25, uh, 5.11. So that's what it's claiming for you one final. <laughs> Still have my touch, but maybe I'll learn something new. Um, so V1 final is the leading bumper car for you. I'll just put it into both. One of the two has to be right. Oh wow, that is right. And the, the trailing one is then uh, 6.81. Uh, I learned something new. I, I never knew about this uh, uh, relative velocity equation. <laughs> I, I guess that there's probably a way to prove it since it's, it's apparently correct. Uh, uh, um, so, so, yeah. Uh, well, I, I learned something new. I've never heard of that relative velocity equation. And um, yeah, if it's right, it's right. Now, so if we are using equation like that, I want you to correctly cite it. Um, I guess if you are telling me that you got it from ChatGPT, then all right, that's a form of citation. <laughs> um, uh, but make sure you know where it comes from. If it's the kind of equation that you might not uh, forget, that you might forget, then you really should um, know where to look it up in the future. Like if it's in your textbook somehow, then know where in the textbook you can find it. Uh, I don't know if a generative AI is good for that kind of citation because uh, there's a random element built into it. So sometimes you ask it the exact same question and you, it might answer a little differently. So. Um, all right, uh, I think uh, I got it. Uh, I got 5.11431F, uh, 31F, and 6.814V2F. Uh, uh, I think those were the right values, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is interesting. So in order to drive the relative velocity formula, it must have been necessary to use the conservation of energy equation because um, like uh, mathematically, it's impossible to solve for this entire setup without making use of this uh, somehow. So uh, maybe you do some factoring of the quadratic e expressions or something. Um, by the way, uh, if I'm interested in looking up how to derive the relative velocity formula, uh, where would I find it? Yeah, and it, it is a relative velocity formula for elastic collisions. Don't use it for anything that's not elastic. Physics text of uh, Young and Freedom. Oh, okay. Huh. 
oh, all right, that's uh, um, that's our textbook. <laughs> Maybe I didn't read it carefully enough. Let me just go f look for it. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a special, but you know, sometimes a special purpose formulas are helpful. Then great, um, it might be worth memorizing. Relative velocity formula. Oh. So it might be in the elastic collision chapter, which I don't remember seeing. But you know, sometimes I skim through this so quickly that um, I don't read all that carefully. Um, elastic. Yeah, <laughs> it's giving you the solution, not driving anything. So I don't think uh, uh, our textbook has it. Uh, conservation equation, man. I mean, you know, I might uh, put this on my list to do at some point, just because it's new. Uh, I've this link isn't working. Hyperphysics has been around a very long time. It might have it. So if it has it, it'll be under mechanics, um, conservation of momentum and energy. Let me try momentum. Uh, collisions, elastic collisions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me just put this on the list. Um, uh, it's a, um, I'll ask the professor about driving it myself. I didn't find the derivation in hyperphysics side or our textbook, uh, OpenStax University of Physics. And I'm just going to put this into screenshot and uh, I'm going to put it into a note for myself later. Um, I didn't even realize a formula like this existed. Uh, they can actually make um, uh, ma make it make a, a solution like this really easy. It's the kind of thing where the hard work of having to deal with the squares have been packaged into something. And this would be the package to package it in. So the rest of method you have to do is all linear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, about driving myself. Yeah. So I'll do that for myself. First, I need to work it out on paper, um, like off recording, to make sure I know how to do it. <laughs> and then I'll put it on an agenda sometime. Uh, I So I know we canceled our next two weeks session, so I might um, come back in a, a couple of weeks or do it next semester. <laughs> but it's a formula that I didn't know existed. So, all right, uh, we have a few minutes remaining, and I think that's a f little enough time that we should just go back to question three, which is going to be easy. Uh, so it's a matter of it's just um, um, uh, so, you know. Using the definitions, but maybe the way it's stated here, you're not quite sure how that relates to momentum conservation um, or impulse. Uh, so I have this uh, question, and I'm not sure how it relates to momentum conservation or impulse that we covered in this chapter. And it'll explain how the quantities given can relate to um, change of momentum per time. Um, yeah, impulses, there's delta t, and that's going to be, well, being aware of this will be useful. Um, you can set delta t to be like one second, uh, unit time. Um, then change in momentum, hitting the wall is reduced to zero, meaning final momentum is zero, good. So you have mass flow rate times velocity. Um, Yeah, that's not that's technically not momentum. You have to multiply this by some time, like one second. Uh, this so it made a unit error. Right now, it, you have seconds squared. So um, now, 
making this mistake might not lead to incorrect answer because if you're using one second for time, then you're basically making a unit error. And um, <laughs> like, so if I simply follow this, ignoring this unit error, I'm pretty sure I'll get correct numerical answer. This is where you have to be careful. Um, so, you know, force calculation, delta P over delta T, and um, yeah. Did it just give me the answer? Like, you are supposed to read it through and understand it. Um, just uh, um, so I'll do it. Uh, just to double check, uh, when we do mass flow rate times velocity, uh, that doesn't give me the momentum directly, right? Oh. When it does this, it takes super long. Oh, version one, and mass flow at loss per second, multiply. Yeah, that gives you force right away, but does it explain why you get force? Um, because the rate of change of momentum is equal to, oh yeah, yeah, so that's an explanation. That sounds pretty good. Um, is the rate at which moment? Yeah, yeah. So that's one way to get it, that answer right away. Um, don't bother dealing with the unit time. Yeah, yeah. That looks good. Uh, let's see if, uh, how this looks. I've lost the real rate of change with not the momentum itself. Here's why momentum mv m is continuous stream mass flow rate. And yeah, I don't like that over that notation. Um, <laughs> You will never see me use it, even though I do recognize that over... It, you know, that is Newton's notation for a time derivative, but I never liked it. It's just a personal thing. So just uh, out of personal preference, uh, although I do see that over that, but up to that point, it's been saying rate. So I think I like this one better uh, because I don't like over that. Um, so and, and then I'll ask... Uh, um, I see the dot over M. Uh, what does that mean? And it'll explain, you know, that to, uh, time derivative, yeah. That's Newton's convention. Uh, and I guess there's a benefit to it in that uh, if uh, there might be like a position derivative involved, then that over that is never meant to be a position derivative. So, all right, uh, thank you. So I think that's uh, all our time. Um, so um, if there aren't any follow-up questions to this, thank you so much for to those of you joining uh, in real time for being here. And thank you to those of you joining by recording the video. Um, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> getting distracted by something else that happened. Um, so uh, if there are any questions for the recording, I'm going to say goodbye to the people joining by recording the video. And um, I'll stay online briefly after stopping the recording, which is what I mean by saying goodbye to people joining by recording the video. I'll stay online briefly for people who are here in real time in case you had any uh, other questions you didn't want on recording. So bye to people joining by recording the video.